I just dashed off this little song one morning, literally on my way to work, and uh, uh, made a little tape copy of it and sent it to him in a Father's Day card that year. And thought that'd be the end of it, and I, I didn't know. many of you uh, can apply that to your life, that song? You remember, remember daddy's hands. You remember your father. Today is Father's Day. It was uh, officially made Father's Day here in the United States under the reign of Lyndon Johnson, who signed it as a order, so within uh, many of our lifetimes. But it's a day that we've set aside here to reflect and remember our fathers. I've received several texts this morning and several, several uh, uh, greetings on behalf from my children and uh, what a joy it is to, uh, to hear from them and for them to recognize that uh, um, they have a father that loves them. The hopefully... As you've taken some time today to reflect on, on your fathers, maybe already you remember some very positive things that have you've experienced throughout your life. I know that my father certainly wasn't the perfect father, but neither is his son the perfect father. Um, but I know that without him, I wouldn't be here. And so I remember that 
He is the start of my existence. And I also remember the fact that he put forth some effort in his life to bring blessing into mine. And many times it was sacrificial, as he sacrificed some of his own desires so that my life could be one of value. I don't have him around to call anymore on the telephone, but uh, his memory, he's been gone now for um, 31 years. But his memory today is just as strong as it ever was in my mind and in my life. And uh, I, want to, I want to honor him continually, both my parents, even though they're both gone. In my reflections and in my memories, I am under the admonition by God to honor my mother and father. And so I desire to do that, and hopefully you do as well. It seems as though that I'm going the direction of Father's Day today, but not necessarily the way that you think. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, in Exodus chapter 20, most of you recognize and realize that it reflects on what we commonly call the Ten Commandments. And on 20, verse Chapter 20, verse 8, it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. There's very few Christians today that don't recognize the importance of the Ten Commandments as not just being archaic and part of the Old Testament, but also something that's very new and relevant to us today and should be alive and real in our lives today. And yet, although we would say that, many of us don't live up to it. In fact, many of the Ten Commandments, as we refer to them as, are ten suggestions that we may think that God has, instead of directions of guidance for our lives. So I want you to remember that God has said that today, the day that you set aside as The Sabbath is the Father's Day. And He wants you, as Christians, as individuals that acknowledge Him, to have a Father's Day once a week. Now, I recognize my Father is my Father all year round. But then on Father's Day, or the day that we've set aside, it was a day that I I took time to specially reflect. I've heard my son Seth came to me and said, Dad, I bought you some steaks. And he knows I'm, I'm his father, he loves me as his father, but he doesn't buy me steaks every day. It's a day that's been set aside for him to acknowledge and to honor me. Here we, we've done in the United States of America. But it is a day that God desires that we set aside and honor him and acknowledge him on a weekly basis. But as I have previously alluded to, what we refer to as one of the Ten Commandments, we practice as it's one of the Ten Suggestions. And there's certain ones that we pick and choose that we want to follow and utilize. And there's others that we want to neglect. Well, today, if today is your Sabbath, If today is the Sabbath day for your life, it's a day that you're setting aside to keep holy. And holiness means connected to God, but it also means separated. Sanctified or separated. When God said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, he's saying, remember the Sabbath day and keep it distinct and separated from the rest of your life. If your Sabbath day is the same as your Monday or your Tuesday or your Wednesday, it is not a holy day. It is not a separated day, a sanctified day under the Lord. God wants us to keep a day that's consecrated, that's surrendered, that is acknowledged to Him. He has established that principle. I want to take a few minutes and just reflect on the importance of that Sabbath day principle in each one of our lives. Well, first of all, 
one of the things that has happened in our society is, is that we have gotten away from the God of origins. We've gotten away from recognizing the fact that we exist because God decided that we should exist. We've forgotten that God designed us and created us for His purposes and His plans. In fact, we've even gotten away from the, the fact and the knowledge of that there is a Creator that magnificently and miraculously brought us into existence from the very dust of the ground. God initiated the Sabbath principle with the point of remembering our origins. He said, as he initiated it, he said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, for on six days I created the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day I rested. We honor God recognizing that He is the Creator. He put forth the effort to create on those six days, and on the seventh day, He rested. It is directly reflective of our origins. As we are honoring that day of rest, we are also recognizing the days of creation. Are you with me on this? We live in a society today that has gotten away from the reality that God created. And we've developed theories, and we've developed superstitions, or, or we brought forth uh, fictitious stories and, and try to give them credibility within our academic structure. Today, there are very few that believe in the fact of literal creation. Do you believe that? That God indeed did exactly what He said He did. He created man on the sixth day. And he created all living life on the previous five. And he breathed in them the breath of life. That God is the creator. Amen? Is there anybody here that believes that today? Amen. We recognize that today. But you know what happened? And, and I, I've shared this with individuals before. That years ago, not too long ago, they used to have blue laws. And they used to call them blue laws. And blue laws were established in communities where certain activities could not be done on Sunday. And it had a direct effect on what could be merchandised, on activities that could be done on Sunday. And it was established along the lines within the United States that of the Sabbath principle. That there needed to be a Sabbath principle, not only in individual lives, but there needed to be a Sabbath principle within our nation. And so they establish these blue laws. They do not exist pretty today unless they are initiated by that particular business themselves. But the blue laws have since dissipated. As I had just previously shared with you, when God initiated the Sabbath principle, it was to acknowledge His creativeness. It was to acknowledge the fact that he put forth all this effort to bring everything into existence, and on the seventh day he rested. As the blue laws dissipated, so did the reality of God as the creator dissipate as well. And we are living in a society today that is vastly turning away from the reality of God. And some of us, some of us that are in the church. Many of these truths are being diluted by the influences of society around us. As I set aside this day to recognize my Heavenly Father, I remember His creative genius. And I remember that this world wasn't created for me. I was created for God. I was created for God in His glory. Too often, I have participated and you have participated in the fact that there's only one life. I need to go for the gusto. I need to get as much pleasure as I can out of this life, forgetting that you weren't created for your own pleasure. You were created for His pleasure. Everything 
that God had created was for his pleasure and purpose. And coming into an understanding of that is something that will modify our focus and modify the directions of our life, won't it? So on Father's Day, as we think of our earthly fathers, I want you to remember your Father's Day, your Sabbath day, as a day to reflect on your heavenly Father and on his existence. On Father's Day, not only do I remember my origins, that my father was at, was was instrumental in my existence, but I also remember his blessings upon me. He supported me. He supported me for 18 years in his household. He provided for my needs. He provided food and shelter. He was there to give me guidance and direction, some of which I didn't like. But nonetheless, he was there caring for me emotionally. And I I remember that. And I honor that memory. I remember that he loved me, even though I didn't want to receive his love at times the way he wanted to give it. I still remember that. I remember the blessings that he was in my life. On this Sabbath day, I want you to remember these things about your heavenly father. That the blessings that you have in your life are because of him. He is the one that's in control. He is the one that allows you to be successful. He is the one that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He is the one that ministers to your need. He is the one that heals your body. He is the one that still sits on the throne of the universe. And on a Sabbath day, a day of his day that we're reflecting on him, just as it relates to our Father's Day, we're remembering the blessings that he's poured out upon us. In Exodus chapter 31, 13, it says, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. And so as we are remembering him and reflecting on him on the Sabbath day, we recognize that he has called me. He has separated me. He has brought me into his family. I am his child because of what he has done in my life. I'm going to tell you, and a lot of times this, this happens, it's happened in our society and it's happened probably in many of our lives, is, is that this whole principle has been swept under the carpet and we don't practice it. We might go to church in the morning, but we'll live the rest of the day for ourselves. We'll go out and do whatever we want. We'll focus on whatever we want to focus on. And God becomes very secondary. But that's not the design that God had established. So I want, want, no matter what, that we have made it into, what God had previously established was a time to reflect on Him to honor Him, to glorify Him. In fact, it was a time where He said that we needed to separate ourselves from the commerce of life, separate ourselves from work. I recognize that we can make excuses all the time, well, my ox fell in a ditch. We call everything our ox. But you know, when it comes right down to it, there needs to be a day that's sanctified and separated so that we can focus on the fact that there is a God who has separated and sanctified us. Are you with me on this? And to tell you what, we, as, as our society grows further and further away from God's holiness, God's righteousness, God's standards, we as the church need to grow closer and closer. We need to be growing closer in that direction and not join, joining society and in, in getting further away. Amen. A day that's set aside to focus on things that are above. A day that's set aside to remember the Father. You know, it tells us in Scripture that we're to honor our mother and father. And 
not only on a Father's Day do I remember my origins and I remember the blessings that God has given me, but I also remember the fact that God has commissioned that I honor my parents, I honor my father. And one of the ways that I used to honor my father when he was around is is that I'd buy him gifts, usually something he probably didn't need, but something that uh, I thought he would appreciate. Or sometimes I would spend time with him, and maybe that's what you have planned today, that you're going to spend some time with your father or you're going to do something with them, spending time with him, listening to him, what he has to say. It's a day where, I'll tell you, the phones are, are... People that normally don't call their father are calling their fathers. People that normally aren't spending a lot of time with them are spending time with them. People that are, are usually doing what they enjoy are willing to sacrifice the things that they enjoy to do the things that their fathers enjoy on this day. You know, a lot of times what my, my uh, kids will ask me, my wife and kids will ask me, they'll say, today's Father's Day, where do you want to go to eat? And I'll say it, and they'll say, no, we don't want to go there. No, but, but anyhow... They, they will ask, they, they, they will show that they are willing, at least verbally, to sacrifice their own desires, their own interests, for my interests on that particular day, as they, as they seek to honor me or uplift me. And uh, I'll tell you, how, how, what a parallel that is. What a parallel that is. Why don't you ask God today what He wants you to give Him as a gift? This is his Sabbath day. This is his day. What can you do to give him? What, is, what will God be appreciated? What kind of gift can I give God that he will be appreciated with? Maybe I need to, just as I would spend time with my earthly father, maybe I need to say, you know what? Maybe today's a day, the Sabbath day, that I need to spend time with the Lord. Spend time with him, maybe alone in prayer. Maybe reading his word. But a day that I'm set, separating myself from my own interests and focusing on the interests of my Heavenly Father. In Isaiah 58, 13, it says, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. So, how important it is on the Sabbath day, on the day that we're honoring God to... And, and there's no doubt we need to honor him every day. There's no doubt about that, that... God's just as going to be just as real and just as powerful tomorrow and Tuesday and the rest of the week. But he has asked us, not just asked us, he's included it in in his Ten Commandments. He has told us to set aside a day where we're not focused on ourselves, but we're focused on him. Consecrated, separated from the rest of the days in which we live. Amen? The six days in which we live, and I'll tell you, we, we know some guys uh, in the Seventh-day Adventist church, and they're very strict on keeping Saturday as a Sabbath day, which was initially the day that was kept as the Sabbath day. Personally, I don't think God is as sensitive as to what day that is your Sabbath, but as if you have a Sabbath. In your life. So whether that Sabbath is a Saturday, whether it's a Sunday, I don't, if it's a Monday or a Tuesday, whatever day it is, it's the day that you set aside before the Lord and say, This is my Sabbath. It's consecrated unto you. I'm going to focus on you, and I'm not going to focus on my commerce of life. I'm going to, sh- how I apply it in my life is this is, is that there are things that as a pastor that I have to do on certain days that actually make up my workload. And uh, there are very few days that I could simply consecrate totally to rest without being open for interaction or or reaching out and and helping others. But it is a day where I do not focus on my own benefit or my own commerce. It's a day where I need to focus on God. 
and set and make it distinct from the rest of my days. And when you honor that principle, I'm going to tell you, God's going to honor you. When you honor his standards, you're opening up the door for blessings in your life. And when you decide to do it your own way, I, I, the way I look at it, God's telling you, okay, go bless yourself. If you want to receive the blessings of God, we need to put ourselves in a position to receive the blessings of God, to honor his principles. What are some of the things he says that we can do that honor him, that present the fact that we're willing to sacrifice our own selves? Well, one of the things that we do, and maybe, maybe for some it's a huge sacrifice, is, is that you got up this morning and you came to church. Or maybe you, you put some tithes and offerings, you know, in the offering plate as it went by, sacrificially, because you were saying, I'm giving as unto the Lord. Hopefully it's a day that you are being attentive to what he has to say and speak to you. And then when you came and you had the opportunity for worship, you weren't just looking around seeing what everybody else was doing or evaluating on not whether or not you like that song or not or thinking about other things. Your focus was, this is what God wants from me. I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to bring God what He wants. This is His day. This is His Sabbath. This is what I've consecrated. I'm going to give God the sacrifice of praise. Amen? I'm not trying to beat up anybody or throw stones. They have a tendency to bounce back and hit me, you know, because these things apply to us all. But the principle hasn't changed. God's word hasn't changed. Society did not change God's word. Society may not be applying it, but God's word has not changed. I believe, and I think you do as well, that the Ten Commandments are not just rules, but they are standards for conduct. They are guidelines that will lead us. It's, it's almost like a road, a road map for our success. And as we put these things into practice in our life and in our societies, what we're going to experience is the bounty that God has designed for us to experience by cooperating with his system. The Sabbath principle, it's been in, in medically established that a person is going to live a healthier life if he's working six days and setting aside one day of recovery. As we set aside one day of rest, God invigorates us and establishes us. And when we're using that day for his glory, we are building ourselves up spiritually as well and strengthening ourselves as we continue life's journey. My encouragement to you today, and I, I've, I've utilized Father's Day in the past to do the same thing because I believe it's important. I believe as the pastor of New Life Assembly of God, it's very important. I've been here for 22 years, approximately, and the key is, is, is that I feed the sheep the full counsel of God's Word. It's not just a little bit over here or a little bit here, but it is a balanced meal of the totality of God's truth. And I've taken the opportunity, I probably will again, on Father's Day to emphasize a principle that's been neglected. And that is a principle that we need to get back to. The principle of the Sabbath in our lives. And hopefully, hopefully today, you will glean the fact that whatever day it is there, is, there needs to be a Father's Day in your life on a weekly basis. There needs to be a Father's Day in your life. And it needs to be kept holy, meaning it needs to be distinct and separate from the rest of your days. 
Now, how you apply that, I'm not here to tell you that you can't feed your hogs or you can't, you know, you can't, t you know, weed your garden and you can't do this, you can't do that because it's, I'm not, I'm not throwing any specifics on this. I'm just bringing to your attention that it is a principle that God has not changed. And it's a principle that's going to lead you to success in your life to helping you be the men and women that God has established you to be. And I believe that the blessings of God are directly associated with our obedience to God. And many of us are begging for the blessings of God, but our lives reflect that we're not willing to do things God's way. God bless me as I continue to live a life that is contradictory to you. And I do not believe his answer is, oh, okay, If we want the blessings of God, we need to put ourselves in a position to receive those blessings through our obedience. All of Scripture reflects that. Having a Sabbath day, having a Sabbath day means, and, and specifically, a day that is to be kept holy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, separated needs to be distinct from the rest of your life on a continual basis. As you do that, as you do that, you will be setting yourself up for the blessings of God in your life. He wants to bless you through your obedience. Amen? I believe it's important to honor our father and our mother But I believe it's far more important that we honor our God. In 58, 14 of Isaiah, it says, Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And so as we're delighting in God, as we are setting aside that day to focus on him, to reflect on him, a day that separated from the rest of our lives. We all busy. Man, we're all busy. There's nobody here that's busier than anybody else. We only got 24 hours in a day. All of us do. None of us has any more. None of us has any less. That's it. All of us. It's what we choose to use them for. Simple as that. It's what we choose to use them for. We need to choose. As followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to choose to set aside a consecrated day unto the Lord. And as we do that and delight ourselves in him, he's going to lift us up on the high places of the earth. He's going to feed us with the heritage of Jacob, for God has promised us. He has blessed us with that truth. Amen? So you want to be blessed. I want to be blessed. I need to put myself in the position of blessing. And that is when I obey. That is when I surrender, and that is when I submit. There are certain things that I will just not do because it's a day that I've consecrated. And it's between me and the Lord. I'm not going to give you my list. But there's certain things that I, I choose not to do because it's a day that's set aside for rest and recovery, but it's also a day that's set aside for consecration and focus. But it's a day that's separated from the rest of the days. That's something that we need in our lives. Let's not forget it, okay? Let's not. Would you join me in prayer?